Ho, ho, ho. Let's see if we can set this up. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> I'm not sure how many people will be reached by this. Let me set this. Hey, everybody. I think this is not too bad. Hello to Dallas. Um, this is Max from Witchman's Finest. I'm in uh, urban Fukuoka, Japan right now. Kyushu, most western island. And I have to apologize for this being not the most um, well-announced Q&A ever. Uh, I just announced it last night on Instagram, so I'm, I hope to reach a couple people. Yeah, um, so I've been working a lot on my uh, kayak spoons recently. Really glad how they keep tur turning out. I'm really addicted to this shape and the lines um, of these. Very primitive style spoons. I uh, hope to try to make some soon maybe even from uh, horn and, and bone because this shape seems to be perfectly usable for that with the very wide throat and the flat stock so in any case um, yeah yesterday I did a little bit of a video on Instagram about spoon carving I was just basically rambling along while I was carving quite a few spoons um, these are made from Sakura at the moment it's a, a tree that I harvested on a Shinto shrine site in Munakata after it was blown over by a typhoon um, and I got the permission by um, a friend of ours who is a rice farmer who is maintaining that shrine property to um, get the chainsaw and get a couple of pieces of wood. That was two and a half years ago. They were bone dry um, for a year later and ever since that I'm reviving the tree um, with a special soaking method. Um, I'm using that gets them to very high degree of moisture again um, over a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I hope the connection is not gonna crap out on us. So yeah, this is this is what they are. This is what I did yesterday on uh, Instagram, and I just announced they're gonna be doing a live video today. That's a little bit of a Q and A. Yesterday was just basically me rambling while I was carving um, so people were just able to watch and maybe pick up something here and there so yeah today this is designed as a QA. and a I don't know how much response they're gonna get I know it's a little bit of a funny time difference to North America and Europe is Europe is terrible it's basically uh, two o'clock in the morning there or something now and yeah maybe some people from the US are tuning in as we're going so yeah well I'm basically what I'm gonna be doing now as well is I just gonna um, keep working on one of my classic Swedish spoons and um, feel free to ask any questions at any time it doesn't have to be about what I'm doing at the moment or so you can just ask general questions about spoon carving about tools um, I'm trying to point you to maybe a video that I'm having out already if there is something that can um, answer your question in detail because if I know that there is a um, video of, about a special tool where I'm talking 15 minutes about that specific tool I might just point you there which is gonna get you a lot more information than me just trying to fill in a couple of blanks um, yeah so you can ask me anything regarding spoon carving um, that comes up in your mind that's the that's whole purpose of a QA. and a and yeah let's just kick it off uh, I have been using on, uh, I've been working on um, the kayak spoons lately a lot. So um, there's a couple of other spoons I have to fulfill still. Um, for finishing, I'm mainly using my old Mora 106 right now that I have. 
up to a very high degree right now. So that's that. So yeah, this is this is pretty much um, going through the first stages already. Um, it is sakura, it's bone dry now, and um, was roughed out. And I started working on it with the knife already. But yeah, this is basically what's going on today. And yeah, just find the comment section down below or the commenting gadget. And I hope it's not too loud. I, like I said, I'm in urban Japan, so that can't be really avoided as long as I wanna be outside. And I'm just gonna be checking periodically if there's any questions or comments or anything. I'm going a little bit slow today because I rifled through six spoons yesterday in about two and a half hours and had Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu training afterwards, grappling and um, it basically destroyed my finger caps The one problem when you are trying to tackle several crafts at a time, as I'm doing it at the moment, is that um, you're dedicating usually a few days to one thing and then a few days to, the, to another thing and it causes you to lose most of your um, built up calluses sometimes, at least to a degree that you suffering again when you get back to carving and or back to leather stitching because either of them needs slightly different calluses. So right now I'm, I'm working, I'm taking you basically through the triple C method that I came up with. Um, there's a video out about it, triple C in X, um, in spoon carving, um, in axing, and then in the, in the knife part of it, the carving part of it. Um, so what I'm working on right now would be considered the last C, which is cleaning. There is a couple of early YouTube videos of mine out about this spoon carving method, and I'm still going with that for, for teaching. It works very well um, to keep you on track. And I'm gonna revisit this, those videos because they were shot with the GoPro a long time ago and I'm gonna redo them with the DSLR shortly, sometimes this spring. Seven people, that's cool. Um, it would be interesting to know if any of you folks, eight people, um, yeah, I should stop doing that. Um, it would be interesting to know if any of you folks um, came here from my Instagram channel. Good question, the Dakota, Sakura, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, cool man, good to know. Um, Sakura is uh, cherry, Japan has several different kinds of cherry, um, the eating cherry is called sakurabong um, and it's a little bit of a different type of cherry. Sakura has a very distinct hardwood and sapwood. What I'm carving right now is pure hardwood, uh, hardwood um, and that's very nice to carve and leaves a beautiful finish even when it's dry although it is pretty hard as you can probably hear. Um, The sapwood 
gets really, really hard. Um, it's a little bit lighter color, but there is so many different color variations even in this tree, just depending on if you're in the trunk or in, in the branch. It is really interesting and it ages extremely well. My personal eating spoon is from this tree. I've been having it for three years, just after I harvested the tree, two and a half years I would say, and I've used it everywhere and cool Chuck thanks for stopping in man um, yeah I've been using it um, for two and a half years pretty much daily and it has taken a beautiful dark brown dark reddish patina um, in the bowl that is gorgeous and every once in a while like every year or so I, I oil it once and then it just looks like some exotic wood it is beautiful that's why I'm sure that the spoons that I'm making right now are gonna be aging very well Sakura is known in Japan to be an extremely hard wood um, and it's basically used the way cherry is used in the West um, there is many different kinds of cherry and they behave all very very differently while European cherry or Austrian cherry is extremely hard black cherry that I've been using and carving from uh, northern Canada is way softer and easier to carve even when it's dry um, and has a beautiful grain but I would say not as pretty as this stuff here yeah folks, um, start firing questions at me. Oh, there was something that I'm, I missed. Okay, so this is how I can do this. Um, okay, the two questions, um, both very good questions. First of all, I just wanna quickly address the question of Wesley Akachino, aka Chino. Um, no, I am not using any sandpaper. Yes, it is a knife finish. Yes, I, I don't use any sandpaper. I use sandpaper in sharpening my knife sometimes, but I don't prefer it because I don't have as much control usually. Um, in the setup that I'm using, although you can use sandpaper to be quite accurate and precise if you use both hands for sharpening and you have an adhesive back of the sandpaper or um, wet and dry sticks quite well to glass if you wet it. So yes, I'm only using knives, no sandpaper. It's a matter of having very sharp knives, dry wood and um, understanding the, the green direction so you don't get tears you have to finish in my opinion um, apart from green birch that I finished wet before with insanely sharp knives that were that would have rolled on me on harder wood but that kept their insane edge geometry on wet birch I was able to finish the bowl across smoothly in general you can only finish in my opinion bowls extremely smooth if you go with the grain from the front and from the back and find this part on the deepest part of the bowl where the grain transitions and then you have to creep up on it and extremely sharp knives and good angles on your hook knives is what's going to be able to do that period then tom no i haven't used tamahagane because um it is unrealistic tamahagane is an extremely rare um, Tamahagane is an extremely rare um, steel that is made in a tatara, which is a what is it called in English? Um, it's a smelter where tamahagane is made from iron or sand, and um, it's extremely impure, so it needs to be folded and it's made only in extremely small quantities every year by a set of traditional craftsmen in one place in Japan 
tomahogany is freaking expensive when it's made the traditional way and um, I'm gonna be talking about this as well when I am making my video about the Yakut knife collaboration I have with a Siberian blacksmith because they traditionally do the same type of ore um, um, how do you say it? there's a name for it um, basically making ore into steel they use the same method and I have a theory that a lot of the Japanese bladesmithing tradition not only comes from China but as well from Siberia because of the immigration from the north over um, the islands and stuff but yeah this is another video Tomahogany is an extremely impure steel um, nearly inferior if you want to say some people call it uh, I don't want to say that but some people call it inferior that's why it has to be folded over so many times in order to get the impurities out of it um, extremely rare a knife from Tomahogany would probably cost um, after I made it and forged it which I wouldn't do because I'm not good enough for that I feel like but if I did it would probably cost 3,000 bucks something like that um, yeah I've used swords from Tomahogany I train with them I do cutting tests with them because I'm the head instructor for the European school of a European um, no for the European school of a Japanese traditional style of swordsmanship called Toyamaryu Yaido Yamaguchiha and yeah I'm allowed to use Shinken real Japanese source in Japan I hope this answers your question cool so um, I'm pretty happy with the bowl I know the front camera of my phone is really not that great but I'm really happy with the bowl on the back now so I just um, gonna be working on the keel part and the transition where um, the the bolt transitions into the keel and then of course veer the keel into the handle and then it's very important for me at that point to really get the rim nice and even on, on both sides so they don't go from thick to thin and just look wavy it's just one of these details about lines that are very important for me to get right and of course that means to know and to, to understand and learn where the grain transitions from one direction to the other. And you have to use a slightly different grip style on both sides. When you switch from left to right, from here to there. So um, that's just something You basically have to learn to get to the same result, but using two different type of knife grips. It's the same inside the bowl. A lot of people um, have a left and a right hook knife and um, use them in conjunction in order to achieve a finish in the bowl to both directions. But I'm too lazy for that. I rather. Um, as well have extremely good tools only right-handed and try to do everything with them otherwise I would have to spend the time and money on trying to get these same exclusively nice hooks for left and right as well what I really like is the transition here you can leave a line which can be interesting and looking very um, smart but on this one here I went for a style where um, on this side here it looks like a completely round transition and I know it's a little bit sunny today but there is a round transition that really basically looks like it's gonna look like the the bowl and the handle is two separated parts which I really like as well yeah keep the questions coming folks I hope I didn't me um, miss anything Thanks, Tom. Uh, yeah. Now the question was the question was interesting. Very good. I know um, it's it's a little bit um, hard to imagine and maybe seems a little bit easier than it is when you're not into Japanese, a little bit deeper into Japanese uh, steel um, manufacturing and. Uh, forging but it's all a very complex and 
overly expensive um, endeavor. So. Okay, good one. Uh, I'm not using the Nick Westman finishing hook because I don't have one. I I, I know of two hands, like uh, smaller hook knives by Nick Westman. One is called the faucet blade or the facet blade or whatever. The other one is the finishing hook. If I had a choice of like getting one of them I would probably gonna uh, go for the the facet blade because it is basically a wider belly and a tighter curve in one where I would have the chance to use the tight curve on the end for roughing cuts to get quickly deep into the bowl and the wider part of the curve for finishing cuts towards the end of the, the, the finishing process the finishing knife itself um, is I think a like a rather open um, curve knife that would only do the finishing and from for my style of spoon carving it would not even do that very well because I still need a little bit of a tighter curve in the back part of the spoon, um, while the, the front part of the spoon, it might be might be nice to have a very big radius. The back, I need a small radius to get deep and then to get deep on both sides because the this part is really crucial to be deep and this part is really crucial to be flat on a spoon that is functioning well as an all-around spoon, not only liquids but as well, well, not only porridge and rice and stuff but as well liquids while still being comfortable in the mouth because the problem with soup spoons in general is that they're so deep that they're uncomfortable to use because the rims are coming up too aggressively. Um, I would definitely go for the finishing, uh, the faucet blade and compared to the to the Reach Schwartz, I'm using, I made a couple of um, wet molded, half tanned um, Swedish Kydex style sheaths for my knives. Um, this is this reach words that you're talking about. This is the older version with the hollow that is very reminiscent of a Carlson knife but bigger. It also gives me different curves, a little bit of a flatter part here and then a very tight part here. And after I worked with this a little bit sharpening wise um, and got it a little bit more convex than it came in the beginning, um, I'm really happy with this Nick Westermans would perform similar although I think Nick Westermans is a little bit stiffer and this one is a little bit um, more flexible um, which I like the stiffer one more but Reed I've, I'm in constant contact with Reed um, about different knives and hook knives and we've been talking about this a lot and he came really up himself without really me talking about it I said this is a little bit flexible and it's uh, just flexing this tiny little bit um, and the, the, the edge was a little bit too straight when he came to me but then again this is like over a year ago his state of um, his hook knaps right now is uncompared I think he has put every single day ever since that into perfecting his hook knaps and um, now he makes one without the hollow in the middle that is very reminiscent again I made a little kydex style wet mold sheath for my Carlson this is flat inside and the new um, reach Schwartz is going to be very similar to this but you can see how similar these are um, the hook by Carlson as I said in my video about the Carlson hook knife the integral construction makes this the best all-around available hook knife for the price on the market bar none there is no doubt about that this is, has a thick enough stock the best steel I think I've ever had on a hook knife and although it's flat inside which people think is not good enough they need a hollow they, it, they don't um, this thing transfers every bit of energy into the spoon that um, I'm putting into the hook and 
this little wet mold sheet here is um, a really fun gadget. Cool. So Okay, sorry, then I mix it up, um, then then that's the, the one that I'm talking about, yes. Then I would definitely go for the, we're talking spoons, right? I mean, the faucet blade might make a lot of sense if you're working cooks or bowls with a, com like with a completely um, round inside sphere, so to say, where you might want to keep the same angle, uh, and then maybe like the finishing blade might be funny because that the front is gonna leave smaller facets and the back of the blade is gonna leave bigger facets then I rather want to go with the faucet but to be honest if I would do cooks I would go with a Tuka cam um, again the Nick Westerman knives are very stiff even the big Tuka cam is not flexing which is very very good because on a big knife like this if it was flexing like thinner knives out there it all the, the power would just be gone and um, when it comes to two cams, I have a six and a half centimeter one that I really like um, for cooking spoons and for cooksers and bowls because it leaves small facets. Um, I would really love to get my hand on a five centimeter one because they are so strong and not flexing and at the same time this consistent um, curve would be very interesting on eating spoons would probably dictate the inside shape of my eating spoons a little bit but on the other hand with one cut I can do it could do the entire back of the eating spoon here and would which would be a beautiful back and there we're getting into a another topic that I've really not talked about that much but with I would title um, if better tools make you a better carver and while this is might be a little bit controversial I would say yes because different better tools they give you better options and they allow you to um, reach your potential as a carver while not as well designed or not as well functioning tools or with this inferior steel um, bring in a big um, factor of frustration on one side and on, on the other hand um, might as well limit you from doing certain things you want to do which might spark your creativity but um, it's also might cause a type of, type of frustration that that will never allow you to reach your potential so uh, making our better tools making you a better carver yes because it's not just about the talent of the carver it's also a <clears throat> it's also a uh, a calculation sorry i was gone there for a sec <clears throat> the sheets are made I uh, <clears throat> the sheets are made from half ten Swedish leather something rather difficult to get and not very common feed is back folks okay I, I think I'm gonna keep this feed going for another uh, 10 minutes or so I just gonna keep working on this spoon and tradition a little bit more and yeah use the use the uh, opportunity if it is one for you and keep those questions coming.
Yeah, the Mora is working really well. <clears throat> No worries. No worries, Chuck. I hope ah, this is a little bit. Maybe I, this is better like that. Keep the questions coming, whatever you want to ask. This might be actually a lot better lighting with the clouds now. Yeah, I've uh, I've worked with with Paul when I was living in Ontario. Um, he was making a little bit of different acts before, and we did a day today. I showed him some of my my axes and what I like what I like in the carving axe and stuff, and I think it helped him a little bit to um, establish his current style of uh, of Viking carving axe that he started making after that. So. He's a very talented kid with a crazy work ethic, so I'm glad he's doing well with it. <clears throat> he's definitely very dedicated. The key to carving is learning to use your tools with a certain bluntness when you say blunt i think i wonder what i want to say boldness that's when the german kicks in it means less facets sorry this is just so too bright means less facets um, facets can be very pretty on the back of the bowl but when it comes to the handle a couple less of them make for a great look and a very smooth and nice surface so I'm just working on my signature key in here Sorry, am I missing any questions or something here? Oh, uh, yeah, cool. Um, I would love to use a Tormac. Right now, I'm not settled yet. I don't really have my own home. Um, I'm working on that. When I have that, I will have a Tormac most likely. Um, but more for re-establishing of bevels that I want to try or I want to 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 have. Um, although being a knife maker as well, when I have a shop, I would probably rather as well have. I haven't made up my mind if I want to have just a grinder, which I'm going to have anyways, or a Tormig additionally because it does really a different thing. The hollow grinding on a Tormig is easier with the jigs. But if I have a knife grinder, I have a hollow grinding possibility there anyways. Um, the hollow grind just makes it easier to keep your Scandi over time, basically. Um, I use water stones, but keeping them 
true all the time is a pain in the ass. Um, I use sandpaper a lot and I'm using diamond um, a lot. I'm not a, the biggest fan of diamond though. Um, I would like to try a little bit better diamond stones in combination with with um, ceramic as I have been using it on my Fel Niven um, DC3 for years and years and it ha has worked for me quite well but it's a very tiny traveling aka bushcraft honing stone that is not really giving me the full potential of using my sharpening methods. Sandpaper is a great option low budget for getting into sharpening and so I can only recommend that at least to give it a try yeah um, Japanese water stones is a totally different feel very very responsive great feedback um, and feel of sharpening with the downside of the high costs and the very soft um, composition which makes it necessary to true them out every single time so what I'm a big fan of which is underrated is um, regular oil sharpening stones that have been they have been used in Europe for a very very long time who's Lloyd knife this is a super ugly whoops this is a super ugly Mora 106 with a different handle that I carved into this weird shape probably six or seven years ago. It sharpened down pretty far and I made a Sami style sheath from Lapland leather for it where it snaps in. with a braided lanyard and this combo has been with me for probably five years like this with the sheath and before it was just flying around in my like pop like my bag but i keep coming back to this i have a westerman and the reach wards here in the, in the bag but right now this one has the nicest edge for finishing cuts And this is why I personally customize and sell the 106 variety on my Amazon shop that I'm going to put down in the description. I call it the uh, Woodsman's Finest spoon, spoon Carving Starter Shop, basically. And there's just tools and honing materials and stuff and books in that shop that I personally recommend and that just are a great starter or even um, advanced setup for spoon carvers. Well, it's just one way of going AC Jack. Um, if it helped you, I'm glad. Just think about what facets do. if. I really like the faceted look on the back of my bowl. Uh, it looks beautiful on a kind of a domed surface to have um, the facets. It, it's nearly a little bit like a tortoise shell. And it can be a style um, that you want to that you want to pursue. That's you know it's every everybody's opinion is different about it. And I do some like this and some like that. Um, I find diamond a little bit of a weird material. It's it's very very quick to cut sometimes, but it also wears down. And then um, more expensive diamond stones, of course, wear down slower, but they are very expensive. Um, cheaper ones are wearing down, and then um, it's just a a little bit of a how can I say that without sounding too esoteric? It's not a very nice and responsive sharpening experience. It cuts very quickly, but it's not very pleasant. 
Well, sometimes I really like using diamonds because I might have a nick and I really want to get it out quickly and I might not have any machines or grinders or something at that point wherever I am and then the diamond stone is just making really quick work of whatever I want to sharpen out. Um, but I mean, I've not used the very expensive DMT um, sharpening systems with uh, double-sided um, bigger stone surfaces and I actually would like to do that in combination with a couple of ceramic ones and then it really might change my, my perspective on that to be honest so um, I still have to discover the diamond a little bit more ceramic is a really nice finishing um, thing but you have to go expensive to cheap diamonds are clocking up as uh, cheap um, ceramics are clocking up um, and it, they're not cutting anymore and then it's very very frustrating and more like a smeary slid it's like skidding feeling over the surface and you don't get any results at all we had we tried that mm. thanks man that means a lot um <clears throat> yeah the leather covers for hook knives is a is a very different difficult topic that i've tried to get into a couple times but i'm, I'm yet to be satisfied with what I'm doing. I'm very happy with these um, sheaths here though, with those um, uh, half tan Swedish leather, the Kydex kind of, they really snap in. It took me a little bit of work, but um, they're fun. They're never gonna look as crisp with burnished edges and everything like a proper veg tin does, um, but for what they are and for what they do, they are, a lot of fun and the one here with the little collar allows you to really snap it in it doesn't go anywhere it's really a lot of fun I love this knife the, the Hans Carlson hook knife for the win when it comes to um, a hook knife with the, the best overall um, all-round size steel quality price um, power transfer it's the best out there bar none and i really have high hopes for the new reach words we have been chatting a lot reed is a really really awesome guy and i think that his new hook might have the potential to be a bigger version of this one which would open up a different realm his older one with the hollow was already a bigger version that i still love using on a little bit softer wood it cuts it, it also like roughs out stuff like insanely well because it's a laser but when it comes to a little bit harder wood and I need more pressure, it just bends ever so slightly and just I lose a little bit of energy. Thanks, Chuck. I've made a lot of these Sami sheets. They're very difficult to make, so they snap in. But I usually get it to a point where you push it in and it's kind of a vacuum. It just goes like... And I love that. This is one of the coolest things. Well, um, Reed is working, uh, he has this out already, he has it presented already, it's basically one of his hooks, his Sanderson hooks, but it does not have a hollow grind anymore, it's now um, a solid um, flat inside surface and it's the best thing he could have done, but since Reed is constantly evolving and he does not um, sit around on his ass um, and basically um, just um, profiting from his earlier work which he could um, which makes him such a special craftsman he really uh, felt the urge of, of um, Im improving even this amazingly good-looking hook he had um, Nick Westerman nailed it to make hook knives that are hollowed inside that are not bending because he's using a thicker spine and nobody else so far has figured it out a lot of people have been trying to to uh, copy Nick Westerman, Westerman. nobody and uh, I've been talking to him over the years a lot too so I'm considering him a friend of mine but Nick has you know figured that out uh, period Reed did not really copy Nick 
the difference between Reed's uh, um, approach is that, which I'm understanding since I am in Japan, the Japanese tradition of leather um, of, of, of tools involves a lot of hollows. The back of tools, no matter if it's um, um, planes or all kind of different carving knives, they usually involve a hollow ground bottom for sharpening purposes and for dragging purposes. And reeds coming out of that school. So um, it was basically two different approaches to the same problem. Just want to show you these these curls. I don't know if you can see these. That's what's coming off the back of the handle. Oh yeah, sharp knife and dry cherry. I don't know if you can tell, but this is um, really reflective right now. I used to finish my stuff green and it still gets a nice surface if you really have sharp tools, but um, it doesn't it doesn't do the same. So yeah, I'm talking a little bit too much, otherwise this one would be done by now, but that's the purpose of today's video. So I just gonna check once more what we got here. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Bandare. Ba ban Bandare. I really would like to know, man, how to say it. No, there's not a bigger HK one. Although, and I don't think a lot of people have realized that Hans Carlsen came out with a with a Tuka cam. I've just, I've seen that recently. So, knock yourself out, folks. I support Hans Carlsen. Everything his his draw knives, his 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 axe is um a little bit lighter than the one that I came out with. But if, if the Hans Carlsen Axe would be 100 to 150 grams heavier, I would probably not have come out with my own carving axe, to be very honest, because it would be the best axe in the world. Um, and a lot of people think it is. For spoons, it probably is. For overall carving purposes, as I'm doing, as well, hand axing out paddles, um, cooks, etc., it was too light, period. That's why I came out with my own one. And you know my own. The Liam Hoffman, designed by Woodsman's finest craft carver. And um, this is just basically perfectly in between the Hans Carlsen and the um, Little Viking by Svante Dierf. Although I still would consider the Hans Carlsen a better axe than the Svante Dierf. And um, this one here is going to be available again for pre order late spring. But. Um, Liam is moving and it totally has the responses really overwhelmed our expectations and there were like 120 pre-orders for these so since he's a custom maker and has a lot of different axe orders to fulfill and custom knives it just takes a little bit longer than we expected so the back order is, was like a year and then he decided to stop the pre-orders but this one has been hot 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 and um, continues to be so so yeah if you want to wait a little bit to get an axe that is 760 775 grams and just right in between get your hand on one of these we went back and forth so many times over this axe until i was happy with the angles he had a lot of patience with me but now it is a the handle is an extension of the blade curve etc etc we've got the perfect balance on this one where it doesn't want to swing down let me see where i get it if I try not to cut my legs off look at this yeah we're glad we put like a, the better part of a year into that axe let me see. Yeah, it is easy to sharpen. It's got a big enough backbone that it does not want to bend too much. Yeah, exactly. And I wanted to make it possible for people to have that in one axe. And that's the reason why I came out with this one as well. Um, until that point when we signed this, um, these axes did not come with a leather sheath. And this one came 
with one of the best leather sheaths on the market. It's just so darn well constructed and tough. Um, and neither of them did. Now they up, up their production to making leather sheaths as well for their axes, which probably customers got tired of not having. And I understand that because they're getting this amazingly honed and beautiful axe and then they have to leave it to the elements, which is really a weird thing. So I'm glad they did that, but the, yeah, not everybody can afford spending 200 bucks or 250 bucks on an X like two or three times until they have all their stuff fulfilled. So there you have it. Craft Carver was supposed at 750 grams to do everything from medium, small to a little bit heavier work. And that's why it came out with it. And it has been um, got get, getting um, very, very good reviews so far. But um, I would absolutely, totally say that the Little Viking, as far as um, the top three, top four, five, um, the Little Viking is definitely in there. And I would still love to get my hand on one. Don't get me wrong. Um, the shapes them itself and um, me really being fascinated with the whole Viking and axe crafting theme. Um, the little Viking is in there. I I just think overall with all the other tools um, I would choose all the different Hans Carlson tools any day over all the different Svante Dierf tools But that's just me and that's just personal preference because they're probably quality wise not a millimeter less um, Just Hans Carlson has less tools than Svante Dierf and I feel like all of them are just so on point um, everything Hans Carlson has I just want to have I don't know it's just me seriously um, both extremely great makers not not a single bit of doubt in that so yeah for beginners especially if you want to upgrade your basic stuff that you have your moral hook or something other unfortunate purchase you may have had to make because of non availability um, Hans Carlson is the next thing that I would point out to everybody to have a look and get on the email list and see to get one of those and then of course custom makers at a little bit higher price point and maybe longer wait but of course as well completely um what i want to say uh justified yeah um if anybody wants to know more about tools i have videos about most of not most of them but a lot of tools on my page the tubi cam the hans carlson hook um the Belzebu hooks, the Reed Schwartz hook, and yeah, I might do more in the future. I'm definitely gonna get one of those new Reed Schwartz hooks, and I will review that. And um, yeah, so the, the, the page is gonna keep going with the Spoon Carving 101. The page is gonna keep going with the um, Spoon Carving Toolkit videos and reviews. The page is going to get the addition of canoe trips over the last three years in the northern Canadian wilderness. Um, that's going to be finally made into short five to ten minute reels of action and bushcraft shots of portaging, canoeing the Canadian backcountries with the paddles that I make um, with axe and knife. And yes, in the description box you find the Amazon link to my spoon carving starter shop which contains all the goodies that I personally really recommend and I would still use, I still use every day. There's some honing compounds that are extremely good and I had the best results with. Um, this knife here is a $25 Mora knife that I just carved the handle into a different shape. Has been with me for six and a half, seven years, I don't really remember. I would buy this every single day and twice on Sunday. That's how much I recommend it. You find it in that shop and um, you don't pay anything extra, but the commission just supports Woodsman's Finest, the YouTube channel. Um, the books are in there. Ville Sundquist's Bar and the Spoons book. A couple more bushcrafty things that I'm using in the outdoors just for the fun of it. I put them in there as well. And I might actually start putting my camera equipment in there. Right now I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S7, a cheap tripod that still performs like an expensive one. That this one, this one here was like 45 bucks. Um, my Canon 80D that I do all my photography on Instagram with and my, my YouTube videos and the wildlife photography in the Canadian backcountry. 
yeah you find stuff on there so yeah if you're in the market for some spoon carving equipment check that that shop out maybe there is something for you if not thanks for looking and supporting the channel of course um sorry guys i'm just reading comments um so yeah this is me woodsman's finest max from um urban fukuoka kyushu japan i hope this video was uh useful for a couple of you folks thanks that um there is there has been a handful of people sticking with me the whole time i got a couple of things to finish and i have to go to the leather shop because my custom wallets um have been taken off quite a lot you can find them on instagram and on my website woodsmansfinest.com the kawa the card wallet japanese kawa is leather so i found this a very fitting name um they are live on my website the single version the double version is out already on my instagram channel and it's gonna get a um a page on my website very soon so woodsmansfinest.com check the description box for the amazon shop spoon carving starter shop and thank you very much for tuning in. I hope it was helpful. I'm going to leave this here on YouTube. So a couple of other people hopefully get to enjoy the questions and answers. And I will announce another one of these Q&As probably a little bit earlier on next time. So more people have the opportunity to tune in. Thanks so much for being there, folks. Thanks for the support. Um, wherever you are, I hope you're safe. And uh, take care. I'm going to see you next time. Cheers, folks.